Segmented displays, they're absolutely everywhere. So much so that we rarely even think about them. The most common form, the seven segment display, has been in common use since the 1970s, but other designs also exist. Even today, when tiny, low-power LCDs and OLED screens are making their way into an increasing number of new devices, segmented displays still offer certain advantages. Their simplicity, minimal cost, and low power usage makes them an attractive option for displaying numbers and simple messages. Now, there are tons of options for sale online these days, most of which use LEDs as a source of illumination. They range somewhat in size, color, and font style. You can even buy some that have more than seven segments, but those are harder to find. However, thanks to the magic of 3D printing, it's now possible to create any design you can imagine. And in this video, I'll show you exactly how to do that. But why bother? Well, besides the enjoyment of making things yourself, the DIY route offers infinite customizability. Want more than seven segments? No problem. Want to copy an unusual and hard to find design like this one? Go for it. Want to make a clock that slowly changes color with RGB LEDs? Bring it on. How about a truly massive display? The only limit is the size of your 3D printer. So here's the basic idea. By using LEDs controlled by an Arduino or other microcontroller, we can light up translucent segments of a 3D printed part. Depending on which ones are turned on, different characters can be displayed. Now, ultimately, I want to create my own design, something aesthetically pleasing, but also very readable and capable of displaying both letters and numbers. But let's not get ahead of ourselves. Better test the basics first. Okay, step one. I'll need to create a custom design in a CAD program, Fusion 360. Let's begin with a super basic seven segment design in order to test out some different configurations. The first consideration is what LEDs to use. To begin, I decided to just use the parts I had on hand, which happened to include a bunch of standard 5mm white LEDs. I whipped up a basic 7 segment design that would accommodate them. The LEDs will be sort of submerged, if you will, inside the 3D printed material and hopefully their light will spread out pretty evenly. For the frame that surrounds and holds the parts that will light up, I'll be using black filament. I made sure that there will always be at least two layers of walls to completely block out the light. Since the standard 3D printer nozzle size is 0.4 millimeters, that comes out to a wall thickness of 0.8 millimeters. With the spacing figured out, I used a piece of perf board as a base to solder the LEDs to. I then added an Arduino Nano to control them and some resistors to limit the current flowing into each diode. This little prototype will serve as a standardized test bed for the 3D printed parts. In order to figure out what would work best, I created several different test versions. Now you could print all of the parts separately and then glue them together, but I'm planning to utilize the multi-material capabilities of my new 3D printer, the Bamboo Lab X1 Carbon. Now for full disclosure, Bamboo Lab did send me this printer to use in my projects, but this is not going to be a review video and no money changed hands. As you can see, I've got the AMS module to go with it, which allows you to load up to four spools of filament. These can be switched out during the printing process, allowing you to seamlessly integrate different materials, or in this case, different colors of the same material into one print. One thing I wanna point out here is how to set up these prints in the slicer program. From Fusion 360, I click 3D print, then select the model. All of the different objects need to be part of the same component, otherwise they won't get exported properly and you won't be able to split them up the right way. Once Bamboo Studio loads, right click the model and select split to parts. Then you can click on objects and change the material for each part. I'm using PETG instead of PLA, and the reason for that should be clear. Well, translucent anyway. This filament isn't completely transparent, and you can still see the layer lines if you look close, but it's definitely the best option for transmitting light that's commonly available. I did a quick test to see how deep each of the LEDs should be placed inside the segments. There needs to be enough material to spread the light out, but not so much that it dims the brightness too much. I think around two to three millimeters from the tip of the LED to the surface of the print is the sweet spot. All of these are printed at 100% infill because otherwise the internal support material would cast uneven shadows that would show up on the face of the display. For the first iteration, I used black and clear PETG. I would say this one actually looks pretty good, although you can see a bit of a bright spot where the center LED is. On the second one, I was curious to see how it would look if I used black and white instead. Terrible, apparently. There's just so much contrast between the black and white material that it's hard to see which parts are even lighting up. I also tested hollow-centered versions of these to see if I could speed up the printing process and save material, but the results were not great. The bright spot in front of each LED was more noticeable. 
I also tested a version with a thin layer of black material in front of the segments to hide them, but it was too hard for the light to effectively pass through. However, by doing the same thing, but using white PETG instead, I got this, which actually looks quite nice, although it is a bit dimmer than the clear version. You'll also notice I switched to using a smooth build plate here. In the end, I kept pretty much the same setup. Solid internals behind a single base layer, but changed it to clear PETG. This provides a nice smooth front finish without sacrificing any brightness. I should probably mention there is one downside to multi-material printing, and that is that it generates a lot of waste material. That's because the previous filament has to be purged every time a new one is loaded. This also makes it take a lot longer than printing an object from a single material, so plan accordingly. Now this little display could use a proper PCB and maybe some RGB LEDs, but before we get to that, I've got some more designing to do. As I mentioned before, my goal is to come up with my own aesthetically pleasing segmented typeface, and I want it to be capable of displaying both letters and numbers. With only seven segments, that's just not possible. At least, you can't display the whole alphabet. So the only solution is to add more segments. Now my original inspiration for coming up with a custom design like this was an incredible video made by the YouTuber Posey. In it, he talks about many different designs for displaying letters and numbers more accurately, and it really made me want to give it a go. For my design, I wanted to try to capture a classic decorative look, but also make it be very readable, and I knew that having dividing lines between the segments was going to be unavoidable, so I just decided to incorporate those in an artistic way. The hard part was trying to figure out how to display all 10 digits plus 26 letters without making an absurd number of segments. I chose to limit myself to 20. A lot of numbers and letters fit pretty well into the standard double square template, so that's a good starting point. From there, I started rounding off the corners to improve the look of most of the digits. I then added some variation in the thickness and curved the middle segment. Next, I added some more dividing lines that split up the top and bottom parts. Then I filled in the left and right sides with wedge-shaped segments. I also cut the upper left and right areas to allow for straight vertical lines to be displayed. To show the letters M and W, I needed a vertical center section. For reasons of both aesthetics and readability, I decided to add serif segments to the four corners. To make a long story short, it required a lot of sketching and erasing, and even more modeling work on the computer. So here's the end result, and I think it looks pretty cool. There's a couple letters that look a little bit weird, but most of them look quite good and are very readable. As far as the model goes, it's basically the same as the basic seven segment prototype that I made earlier. The only difference is that it has to be a bit larger to accommodate the LEDs. You can't really have segments smaller than their base diameter. All right, time to design some PCBs. Technically, you could just skip it and solder some LEDs together in a matrix, or you could chain them together the way those RGB strips do. But designing a custom PCB not only saves space and looks way more professional, but also prevents you from having a horrible tangle of wires, which is always a plus. For the LEDs themselves, I opted to go with the tried and true WS2812. You can actually get these in surface mount or through whole variety. These are pretty easy to work with. Regardless of which type you choose, they have four pins, power, ground, data in, and data out. They can all be wired in parallel as far as the power goes, but the data lines do have to be sequential, since that's how the microcontroller knows how to address them. Now the seven segment prototype that I came up with actually looks really good, so I figured I'd make a nice little clock out of these just for fun. But rather than one big PCB, I thought it would be cool to make a little single digit module with input and output plugs. The idea is that you could chain any number of these together. This one has the surface mount WS2812 LEDs on it, plus decoupling capacitors, and some input-output headers. The headers are spaced in such a way that they could fit into any standard 2.5mm grid, breadboard, or perfboard. Now, because I kind of suck at soldering surface mount components, I ordered these fully assembled by this video's sponsor, PCBWay. PCBWay offers tons of customizability for your PCBs, including solder mask color, thickness, base material, surface finish, and more. And as I mentioned, you can even have them do all the assembly work for you. They also offer CNC machining, 3D printing, injection molding, and sheet metal fabrication. The Instant Quote tool allows you to quickly get an estimation of your costs. Simply upload your files, select your options, and you're ready to go. KeyCAD even has a one-click plugin that generates all the Gerber files, bill of material, and everything else you need, which makes it a super painless process. 
the boards that I ordered worked perfectly, so it was time to update my code to take advantage of all that RGB goodness. I'm using the Adafruit NeoPixel library to control these. The code is pretty straightforward. There's an array of ones and zeros that represents what segments should be on to display each number. Then the NeoPixel library parts of the code are used to control the color, brightness, and any special effects like fading. As you can see, I printed a new version of the model that's thinner overall and optimized for use with these surface mount boards. It can be mounted securely using heat set inserts. All right, I'd say this looks really good. Time to move on to the 20 segment version. Now, there is one more thing that I decided to do that might raise a few eyebrows. Remember how I said that this display had to be a bit larger? I don't think one LED per segment is necessarily gonna cut it. I mean, it might look okay, but some of those segments are weirdly shaped and have tight corners that might not get enough light. So I'm gonna add more LEDs to some of them. All right, if you wanna get technical on me, I guess that means that there's more than 20 segments from an electronics standpoint, but that's more of a limitation of the material's light transmission capability. Visually, there's still only 20 segments, so I think it counts. So fast forward several hours of design work and voila, here's the finished PCB. And here it is for real. This one was designed to use the through-hole version of the LEDs. Why? Well, I actually think they do a slightly better job of distributing the light due to their shape. Light comes out in all directions instead of basically a single direction like with the surface mount version. And also, if anybody wants to build one of these themselves, the soldering is a whole lot easier. By the way, I designed this circuit to use tiny decoupling capacitors next to each LED, since that's what the spec sheet said to do. But I didn't end up adding them and opted for a single larger through-hole capacitor on each board. It seems to work perfectly fine this way, probably because unlike on a strip, there's a single 5 volt plane on one side and a single ground plane on the other, meaning there shouldn't really be any difference in voltage between each LED, since they're all in parallel. I 3D printed a version of the model using the same parameters as the final rendition of my 7 segment prototype. It features holes for heat set M3 inserts, which allows it to mount securely to the PCB. It's worth pointing out that the LEDs should be soldered to the PCB after it has been bolted to the 3D printed part to account for any minor inaccuracy that might make fitting all of those LEDs into their respective holes difficult. Now, with everything assembled, it was time to update my code. and. Honestly, there wasn't really that much to do. I mean, I just had to make it control 20 segments instead of seven, and also display the entire alphabet in addition to the 10 digits. Oh yeah, and also display 10 characters simultaneously. So, okay, I guess there was a little bit to do. With that figured out, I basically just had to make a whole bunch more of these because I had something pretty cool in mind. Luckily, the Bamboo Lab X1 Carbon prints crazy fast and I was able to get them done two at a time. Otherwise, it probably would have taken forever. Being able to monitor the progress of the prints from another room on my computer or even while I was away from home using the app on my phone was super useful as well. Oh, and the time lapses are pretty neat. I did use up quite a bit of filament though since I printed 10 of these things, and that's because I wanted to build this awesome message board. As of the recording of this video, my setup for these is temporary. Right now, I'm still just controlling them with an Arduino Nano that receives serial data from my laptop or phone but I'm planning to build a proper system for them using an ESP32 that can display the time, weather, and any notifications that I receive via Bluetooth or maybe a web server. That's all beyond the scope of this video though. My focus here was to just show you how to create these types of displays. I will be making a more polished version though. Now, if something like that would interest you, comment below and maybe I'll make a follow-up video. To power it all, I'm using this AC to DC converter capable of pumping out a ton of amps. Way overkill for this task, but given that there are a total of 380 LEDs, your average wall wart isn't quite up to the task. I also printed these little interlocking stands to hold the displays. Each one has a slot on one side and a little tab on the other that locks them together horizontally. I could probably come up with a nicer case for these, maybe something made out of wood, but this will do for now. So what's the verdict on this project? The light distribution isn't perfect. You can still see some bright spots where the LEDs are. There might be a better way to do this with 3D printing alone, or maybe some kind of epoxy could be poured into a 3D printed frame. But overall, given that this really is a one-click solution to making custom displays, I'd say the results are pretty good. And I'm quite proud of my 20 segment design. Let me know what you think in the comments. If you enjoyed this project and you want to build one, be sure to check the video description because I will be linking to all of the 3D printed files and the code and all the other good stuff that you might need. 
And while you're there, do me a solid favor and hit the subscribe button. Thanks for watching.